Hello friends, it's Wendy Rule here. It's almost time for the Scorpio full moon and um, every full moon I perform a special concert themed around the astrological sign of the moon for all my wonderful folks on my Patreon page. So I thought I'd just take this opportunity to tell you a little about um, the qualities of this upcoming moon and how we can harness them and maybe share a song with you too entice you over to see the full concert which will be up on um, my Patreon page very shortly. So first of all Scorpio is fixed water so there's the four um, elements earth, air, fire and water in um, Western astrology then there's the three different ways that each element can behave. There's cardinal which likes to begin things, there's fixed which likes to manifest and complete things and then there's mutable which moves which is the energy of moving on so scorpio is fixed water water that wants to just go deeper and deeper if water is contained if it's fixed water rather than flowing like the ocean or falling like rain water naturally wants to move if it's given an opportunity to it will find the low ground it will drip through stone Fixed water is this idea of this contained water that, that focuses its intensity. So I like to think of the Scorpio energy, the waterness of Scorpio as almost being like a deep underground pool or a well or um, a hidden underground river carving its way. Um, Scorpio is very much about that energy of the underworld of honoring the death part of the life death life cycle. In the northern hemisphere when the sun is in the sign of Scorpio then it's autumn. The full moon always occurs at exactly the opposite sign on the zodiac than the sun is in. So right now we are in the sign the sun is in the sign of Taurus where Taurusing in the northern hemisphere it's springtime and in the southern hemisphere it's autumn. Um, but that full moon is going to hold that Scorpio energy regardless of whether you're in the autumn or spring lands. We'll be able to access that energy of, the, of um, harnessing the gifts of the underworld, going deep, doing the deep transformative work. Um, I'll show you what I've got on my altar. And um, I have this fantastic scorpion. Oh, oh look, there it is in the light of the moon. <laughs> which I love putting on this altar. In the direction of east, I have a little cauldron and I was burning some myrrh earlier, which is a lovely, has a lovely energy of leading us into the underworld. And I have my athame, the energies of air to cut through, illusion, keep my mind nice and sharp. I have special candle, Scorpio candle that was gifted to me, representing the energies of fire, which aligns to the direction of south here in the, south, in the northern hemisphere because the sun's moving um, across the southern sky. Uh, and in, of course, in the southern hemisphere, fire aligns with the north. Then we have water in its container, representing the energies of depth, and a deep feeling of cleansing, of reflection, of emotion, of love. I have the energies of earth here and I've chosen to use a little piece of malachite which has a very scorpionic feel, this dark lovely green said to be a mood intensifier so it has that Scorpio quality. Thank you earth. Then I have the dark goddess here representing spirit and the dark goddess really aligns very strongly with Scorpio. It's the energy of the crone. If we think of the, of the goddess in three phases, the maiden, mother and crone, we can think of the new moon, the full moon and the dark moon. The crone energy is that dark moon energy that leads us down and down and down, deep exploring those deeper parts of ourselves, sometimes difficult and shadow parts of ourselves. I also have this lovely um, ceramic pomegranate that I picked up on one of my tours in Greece. And um, 
The pomegranate aligns for me with the Persephone story and her descent into the underworld. And it's both an underworld food, it, when you open a pomegranate, it's springtime here, so no pomegranates, but I bet that you folks in um, Australia might be able to find a nice pomegranate in the shops at the moment. Um, when you open it, it drips beautiful blood red and juice and lovely, and then so many seeds, it's so full of life. And so it's like this life and death all in this one gorgeous tasty bundle. I have this really cute little skeleton that my friend William Llewellyn Griffiths made for me for one of my birthdays many years ago. And I like to honour the energies of death on the altar during the, um, during the Scorpio full moon. Because Scorpio reminds us that death is part of life. In life is death, in death is life. They're inseparable. And I think the fact that we're springtime, it's like Beltane season here in the Northern Hemisphere, and yet it's the Scorpio, it's like a yin-yang. There's this beautiful, white, lovely beltane and then this little seed of, hey, remember, remember that there's also death within life. And reminder too, that in the Southern Hemisphere, that it's Samhain time. So there's always that balance across the hemispheres in all cycles of life. There's always a balance between life and death. So I also have a little bit of snake skin that has been shed by a snake on my altar. And that is to remind us that Scorpio is the energy of transformation, um, of shedding the old so that we can make way for the new. And sometimes that can be a painful process, but we've just got to be present with it. Make space for those darker, more difficult times. That's what Scorpio teaches us. And I have the full moon card, as always, by my wonderful friend, Vicky T. Cooper, who did the wonderful pomegranate painting on my Persephone album. These are from, were created during one of my positive magic courses. And Vicky did a whole set of these for all the phases of the moon. And we'll be doing positive magic again next month. So I'll give you more info about that soon. So I'm gonna do a song. And I'm going to encourage you to tune in to the Full Moon Magic concert on my Patreon page. You can sign up for just um, two USD a month and you'll get a Full Moon Magic concert. And then lots of other treats too, discounts and interesting bits and pieces and storytelling and all that kind of stuff. But for now, here's this song. It's called Singing to the Bones and I'll tell the story about it too. Actually, it comes from New Mexico where I am right now. There is an old wise woman of the desert and she goes out and she collects the bones of animals and she brings them back to her cave, bone to bone to bone, just like they should be laid out like a beautiful mosaic. And she connects the line of the vertebrae, the curve of the ribs, femur to pelvis and finally places the skull and then she begins to sing low and deep and as she sings sinew begins to bind the bones together she sings flesh onto the bone, she sings fur. She sings the heart into beating, the lungs into breathing. And suddenly the animal opens its eyes, leaps up from the floor of the cave and runs out wild into the desert night. And we are that animal. And we are that cave, and we are that song, and we are that woman, and we are those bones. And when we feel so stripped back that we think we can't possibly go on, and yet we do. When we are hurting so much 
that we almost wish we didn't continue. One we're so stripped back that it reveals the bone, the resilient part of ourselves, and we can sing ourselves back into being. Thank you. 
I have so many songs that I've written that fit the Scorpio theme and I share loads of them during my Full Moon Magic concert. So head to my Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash Wendy Rule. You can check out all that I've got on offer there, Full Moon concerts, Dark Moon things, lots and lots of info. Sign up for just two bucks a month and, um, and we'll get to celebrate the Full Moon. Okay, blessed be. Bye.